Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the third and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 11, Measurements and Data Processing, where we will be looking at infrared spectroscopy and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. In our previous video, we introduced one of the main imaging techniques used to determine the structure of organic compounds. This video will continue to describe the other two, starting with infrared spectroscopy. Infrared spectroscopy is very useful to determine the functional groups present within a molecule. The process involves exposing a molecule to infrared radiation of 400 to 4000 wave numbers, given by the unit centimetre to the minus one. The absorbance of this radiation can then be measured and graphed to produce graphs like this, where each trough represents absorbance by a functional group. The region below 1500 centimetres to the minus one is known as the fingerprint region, aptly named as it is unique to each molecule. However, it is very complex, and so for your exam, ignore it. Instead, focus on the remainder of the graph, which shares similarities based on functional groups. Each functional group expresses absorbance across a range of wave numbers, as stated in the data booklet. However, learning such ranges is pointless, as A, they overlap with one another, and B, you can understand these graphs by learning key patterns. However, don't forget they're there. You could be asked for the range of wave numbers over which a functional group absorbs infrared radiation. The five patterns we recommend learning are a trough centered around 3000 indicates an alkyl group, CH. A narrow trough at 1700 indicates a carbonyl group, C double bond O. A very narrow trough at 1600 indicates an alkanyl group, C double bond C. A trough between 3000 to 3500 indicates a hydroxyl group, OH, within an alcohol, which, since an alcohol will always contain an alkyl group, is always associated with a trough centered around 3000. And a very large trough between 2500 to 3500 indicates a hydroxyl group, OH, within a carboxylic acid, which, since a carboxylic acid will always contain a carbonyl group, is always associated with a narrow trough at 1700, and although a carboxylic acid will also contain an alkyl group, the expected group contained around 3000 is absorbed by this trough, hiding it. Let's review this content with an example question. The following infrared spectrum belongs to the molecule C3H8O, which can exist as several isomers. A draw two isomers of the species containing two distinct functional groups. B, state and explain which of these two isomers is represented by the graph provided. For A, we can see the species is a three carbon chain, which must contain a single oxygen atom, allowing for the creation of an alcohol, aldehyde, ether, or keto. To help differentiate, we can calculate the IHD. So, using our formula, 2N plus two minus H over two, we can substitute in N is 3 and H is 8, giving an IHD of 0. Therefore, this molecule contains no double bonds and so cannot be an aldehyde or ketone. So, to answer the question, let's draw two potential isomers of this 3-carbon chain, one alcohol and one ether. These could be propan-1-ol and 1-methoxyethane, but others are possible. For B, we can see on the graph there is a trough between 3 and 3.5 and thousand with an associated trough centered around 3000, indicating hydroxyl and alkyl group respectively. Therefore, our alkyl isomer would be the correct one. However, we could still propose isomers of this alcohol without knowing which molecule is responsible. For example, propan 2 This is where the final imaging modality is extremely useful. Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy, NMR, does not reveal the components of the structure or functional groups within, but it has the capacity to differentiate isomers. It can be visualized at low and high resolutions, although only those of you studying IB chemistry higher level will need to cover high resolution images, covered in our topic 21 video series. Before we get stuck into NMR, we first need to explain the concept of proton, i.e. hydrogen environments. These are simply groups of hydrogens found within similar situations. Consider the displayed formula of propane. Dividing the hydrogens into groups, we can say it consists of the three hydrogen groups, CH3, CH2, and CH3. However, since the CH3 groups are both adjacent to a CH2 group, they are identical. 
Thus, it contains two hydrogen environments, containing six and two hydrogens each. Let's change this to propan-1-ol. It consists of the four hydrogen groups, OH, CH2, CH2, and CH3. Since the leftmost CH2 group is adjacent to an OH and CH2, whilst the rightmost adjacent to a CH2 and CH3, they are not identical. Thus it contains four hydrogen environments, containing one, two, two, and three hydrogens each. Let's change this to two chloropropane. It consists of the three hydrogen groups, CH3, CH, and CH3. However, since the first and last CH3 group are both adjacent to a CHCl, they are identical. Thus it contains two hydrogen environments, containing six and one hydrogens each. Finally, let's change this to propane-1,3-diol. It consists of the five hydrogen groups, OH, CH2, 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 and OH. However, since both OH groups are adjacent to a CH2 group, they are identical. Additionally, the first and last CH2 group are both adjacent to an OH and CH2, so they too are identical. Thus it contains three hydrogen environments, containing two, four, and two hydrogens each. So what is NMR? You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.